So what I want to show is how do we get the general formula for the uh, uh, future value of money when they're compounding n times per year. And so what we know, uh, and you can find this in pretty much any textbook where you're dealing with a compounding interest problem, is that the future value, I'm denoting it with A, is the principal times 1 plus r over n raised to the nt. And so in this situation, what we mean by uh, P here is that that's our initial investment, that's our, our principal. R is the annual rate N, in this case, is the number of compounding periods. in a year. And T is just like before, uh, T is simply the T is the uh, number of years. So as we get through the derivation, uh, we'll figure out what does this R over N mean and what does this NT actually mean for our problem. So I'm going to take a look at something more specific. We're going to use uh, an investment. That we're going to say that the principal investment is one hundred dollars and we're talking about an account that has an annual rate of five percent and we're going to say it's compounded semi-annually and so that semi-annually means that two times during a year we're going to apply the interest that has earned up to that point and we're, we've got an annual rate of 5%. That means overall, the, the entire year, the interest rate was uh, this theoretical 5%. But when I apply it more often during the year, I'm not going to apply a 5% rate at that moment of time that had passed. I'm going to apply the portion of the 5% represented by our, our compounding period. So we're going to think of, okay, we're going to start with a time like t equals 0. I know what I'm starting with. That's $100, my initial investment. So what is the first time that I get when I reinvest my money? So if I compound semi-annually, uh, what we have here is the number of compounding periods being told to us. And so that number for semi-annually means two times during the year. So I need to look at uh, the next time I'm compounding is, well, if I do it two times in a year, I take 1 divided by 2, and that gives me 0.5 years, or 6 months. And so we have here that when t equals to 0.5, I get my first uh, infusion of interest back into the account. So I start with my principal. So this is the, uh, my principal. But I'm going to add in my interest that I earned. And, you know, here we think of, well, how did I get that first uh, stepping stone? Well, I took the um, uh, annual rate and divided by n to get my first compounding period of t equal to 0.5. The interest I'm going to earn, well, the interest is my principal times the rate. And what I said is, well, I'm not going to apply an entire 5% because I only want half the year. I'm going to take my 5% over 2 because I'm applying the interest two times during the year. So I can do this calculation and you know 100 plus 100 times 0 0.025 and we can get an answer from our calculator. Well what I'm interested in is in a general pattern. So when I look at this I'm going to factor out the 100 and see what I'm left with. 100 times 1 and then 100 times 0 0.05 over 2. And so if I put that in the calculator I can get an answer and it shouldn't be any surprise, I'll let you do that in the calculator, is that you know this 0 0.05 over 2 says it's 2.5 percent so that's $2.50 for the first six months. 
but this is really what I'm looking for. So now, when's the next time I'm going to apply the interest? Well, the next compounding period would be when I hit one year. So now I have t equal to 1. And so what I think of is, well, I went to my first compounding period. Now I want to go to my second compounding period. So I'm going to take my principal, which is the $102.50, and I'm going to add on the interest that's earned. And remember, we're getting 2.5% uh, for that compounding period. We're not getting a full 5% because we're only going half of the time. So we're going to get half of that interest. So we have 100 times, not 100, our $102.50 times our 0 0.05 over 2. Well again I'm looking for a pattern so I see 10250. I'm going to factor that out and that leaves me with a 10250 times 1 and 10250 times a 0 0.05 over 2. But we already saw what 10250 equals to. We saw that you know these were equivalent to each other. So this 10250 is just going to be replaced. So I have in its spot 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2 times this 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2. So we multiply the bases together and we have 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2, the quantity squared. And so, you know, maybe we're interested in what that equals to just to compare what happens when a compound more often than when it's, say, compounded annually. So I, I can pull out a calculator and we can figure out, well, we have 100 times, in parentheses, 1 plus... 1 plus uh, 0 0.05 divided by 2 and we're squaring that so square it and we get an answer of $105.0625 or roughly $105.06 so we if we compare this to what happens if you compound annually we earned a little bit of extra money because I'm reinvesting the interest earlier. I didn't earn a lot, but this extra six cents is added into my account because I'm compounding it two times per year. But I want to take a look at my structure here now. So if I start looking at this 0.05 over 2, that's the amount of interest I'm applying per a period. And this exponent here, remember this is kind of our, our first period. And this one here is the second period that we've gone through where we're reinvesting. And so when I get to the second period, notice my exponent was 2. My first period, my exponent here, was 1. So what do you think is going to happen when I get to, say, the third period? Well, that's going to be after another 6 months, so t is going to be 1.5. And this is my guess, is that 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2 to the third power. And it ends up being true. If I go through the process of taking this 105.0625 and adding the interest earned for 6 months, so that half of that 5%, I'm going to get the same result. So it's not a question mark. It does end up having that future value equal to it. So that 3 is actually our time times the compounding periods per year. So if my time is 1.5 and I'm compounding it 2 times per year, that 2 times 1.5 gives me the number of compounding periods I've gone through. So when I start looking at this formula and its structure, that n over t is going to mean something to me. 
that sorry that n times t is going to mean something to me that n times t is actually the number of compounding periods for the investment the r over n is the interest rate per compounding period so if i'm got an interest rate of five percent and i say i compound it semi-annually so two times per year i'm only getting half of that five percent every time the interest is compounded back into the account so that r over n is just giving me that portion of the interest applied per compounding period and my exponent here nt is telling me the compounding period that i'm currently at so if I want to figure out what happens for a, a given compounding period, so if I say the fourth period, that's the same as saying that t equals to 2. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we have is kind of a, a, a general idea of where that formula is coming from. When I look at the values for t, and n now put back into this equation or my formula here I see that my amount is that 100 times 1 plus r over n and that where did the 3 comes from that becomes from 2 times 1.5 so if I want to look for uh, how much money is in the account for let's say five years of compounding semi-annually so I can continue this pattern out of taking the investment and at every period applying the interest and seeing what the total value is what the general formula allows me to do is skip all these uh, intermediate steps and say well that's a hundred dollars times one plus the interest rate per period and I just have to figure out in the exponent how many periods I've gone through well, for five years, I do that two times per year, that's 10 periods. And so we see where the 10 comes from by taking the um, compounding periods per year times the number of years. And so our investment after five years would be A equals to 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 2 to the 10th power and then that we can put into our calculator to get a result so we would have 100 times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 2 raised to the 10th power now if you don't do this product first to put here you're going to be uh, want to be a little bit careful in your calculator that you put the product if you want to do 2 times 5 in a parenthesis for the exponent otherwise if you just raise it to the 2 and then multiply by 5 the calculator's order of operation says well you're squaring it and whatever that answer I'll multiply by 5 so the parenthesis here is very important to so say I want that product to be the exponent so if you don't simplify it ahead of time you want to make sure that you're adding these parentheses here when you're using the formula and we get an answer of hundred twenty eight dollars and round it up to a penny. So if, if we pull up what we did before after five years, what I notice is by compounding more often is that I made a little bit more money than compounding annually. So for this case, what we're saying is compounding annually in this column. And what we found is that we earned 128.01 if we compounded it twice a year versus once a year. So I hope this kind of helps clarify where the formula actually comes from by looking at what does it mean to compound uh, semi-annually. So we're, what does this R over N mean? So that means that we're only looking at a portion of the interest for that single compounding period and then the exponent becomes how many compounding periods we've gone through and so when we look at n times t it has some meaning and r over n has some meaning to us that it's just not this magic formula that gives us the correct answer